and we were out back of my parents' home and swimming in the pool. And William was too young to be swimming, so we had a paddle pool behind us on the pool deck. And we were chitter-chattering and just kind of getting out of the pool for lunch. And I turned around and William wasn't there. And I assumed he'd already gone up the stairs to the kitchen for food, but he wasn't up there. And another friend of mine ran around the pool and Will was floating in the swimming pools. We got a call, and I think it, the way it came in, it was a suspected drowning. And that's all the information we had. We had the address and showed up, and uh, there's a lot of people around. Uh, little uh, Will was on the floor in the family room, and there was a sliding glass door. You could see the pool outside the house. And uh, his color wasn't good, um, and it was obviously wasn't breathing, so we jumped in. Without hesitation, the captain actually started mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth while we were getting the airway and BBM out, and he take full, took full control of the whole situation as well. I was just two years in the job. We all were about two years in the job, so for us, it was, uh, it was quite the experience at the time. When first responders go in, into an incident and that person goes to hospital or goes to where, whatever next level of care is, we never hear the outcome of that particular incident. We were told, uh, I think it was in the news as well, that the child, or in a newspaper, that the child had, that Will had passed away. Just well, we even came to work the next day, and you have to understand how firemen work. We didn't say a lot about it, but we did acknowledge that we'd heard he hadn't made it. Um, if you do this job for any length like the time, you carry a lot of that negative stuff with you. We're trained to do what we do, and we really want to make a difference. And if you don't make that difference, it's crushing in a way. And I just remember years ago, oh, Tisha's son almost drowned, but he's okay. That's all I remember. And then when I heard how intense it was, and I said, did the fire guys know that he lived? He goes, oh no, actually the media reported he died, and that was the end of it. So I knew that these guys probably never heard of it. Nineteen years old now, and he's at uh, university in Waterloo taking geotechnical engineering. But just knowing that Will had survived was like a kind of like a, a huge relief, and it's yeah, it was uh, it was a gift, as yeah. you said. Yeah, it was actually uh, it was nice. Yeah, we all carry some ghosts. Um, it's it's part of the job. Uh, you know, I, I, it's funny being a firefighter because you get thrown into a situation that's not of your making, that you don't really have all the information on, you don't understand what you're going to do, but you go in. Through your training, your experience, and intuition, you just deal with the problem or the incident as best you can. I think you can make a correlation. My father was in the war. He was a pilot in the war. And he very seldom talked about his history in the war because in a lot of respects, they bury that stuff. It's hurtful or difficult to bring it up. You know, when you get a good incident, it's nice to, it's nice that there can be a reaction. Uh, you know, that kind of information really is uplifting. It's, well, you know, we did make a difference. And that's what we strive to do every day. They're just so appreciative that we came and made an effort to come. And of course we would. We need all our first responders. We need to um, cherish our first responders, respect our first responders, and I understand that there are privacy rules in place that don't allow first responders to find out when there's a happy ending, but they carry a lot of stress because of their jobs, and to know even if there's one person that, that had the rest of their life because of them could make those other situations a lot easier to deal with. We've come a long way in my career on this job and we're much more aware of the effects of mental trauma on all first responders, firefighters, paramedics, uh, police officers and we're doing a much better job acknowledging that strain. You know, we're ten times more likely to think about suicide, we're six times more likely to be addicts. These are significant issues in our industry. And you could see the emotion on uh, both uh, Firefighter Sumner and Captain Appleby's face to hear that this had a positive outcome, and that's, uh, that's profound. But what it really shows us is 
the significant effect on this trauma for all of us first responders.